Okay, so my name is Sam Modicom, also a solution architect just like these two. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, Search Fabric. Does anybody know Search Fabric? Has anybody used Search Fabric? Okay, cool. Very nice. Um, so Search Fabric is a lot like Aka in some respects and uh, a bit different in some respects. Uh, Search Fabric is a huge topic and I'm only going to focus on the actor model on Search Fabric for now because otherwise we'll be here tomorrow morning. So what is Search Fabric? Um, Search Fabric is basically a distributed systems platform that you can use to create applications that are hyper scalable, reliable and easily managed. So you can create applications that are composed of microservices that are run at very high density on a pool of nodes, uh, also known as a search fabric cluster. So you see here, this is basically your application. This is your search fabric cluster and search fabric provides basically all your infrastructure needs. It provides your availability, you feel over um, all kinds of stuff that you don't want to worry about in the distributed systems program. And Search Fabric itself can run in different environments. So you can see we can uh, run it on Windows Server and uh, later when it's general available, we will be able to run it on Linux. And using that, we can run on Azure in the cloud, but we can run on Azure Stack in our own private clouds. We can even run at third party cloud providers. So I can create a Surface Fabric application which runs on Surface Fabric in an Amazon uh, data center. I can even uh, fill over from that Amazon data center to Windows Azure data center or the other way around. So it's very uh, flexible. Uh, of course, when you uh, write an application specifically on Surface Fabric, you're locked in into Surface Fabric, but you aren't locked into your uh, hardware provider. Right. Um, so Surface Fabric, Fabric can host all kinds of applications. Everything that's executable, you can just uh, load it up into Search Fabric and it can run. But if you use the uh, SDK to create a specific application um, using those uh, SDKs, you can choose between two programming models. You've got reliable services uh, on the one side, on the other side you've got reliable actors. And there are some trade-offs regarding flexibility and simplicity here. And for this talk, I'm just going to focus naturally on the Reliable Actors uh, API. Um, if you compare these two, Reliable Services gives you a bit more control of the platform, a bit more flexibility, uh, but that means you also, it's slightly more complex because you also need to uh, manage um, some concurrency and some threading uh, while creating the Reliable Services. Uh, has anybody worked with web and or worker roles in the current Azure? Okay, so this is most uh, comparable to uh, that, but the next version. Um, and we can uh, store state in reliable collections, which is very nice because the state is then co-located with the compute and you get a very low latency. So you don't need to go to a, a, a database or a DB or whatever. Uh, to get your state over a network hub, the state's right there on the machine where your service is also running. Um, okay, so that's for another talk. We will dive into uh, actors. Um, we've seen all kinds of ACA actors, and uh, these actors uh, are very much alike. Uh, there's a difference, uh, a big difference, in that these are virtual actors. Um, so they are garbage collected. They will be activated when you call them, and after uh, an, a configurable uh, amount of uh, timeout, uh, they will be garbage collected and they will be deactivated. Uh, of course, while the actor is uh, receiving uh, messages, they won't be deactivated, but if no messages are coming in, they will. Um, this is an interesting point, no need to explicitly create or destroy them. Uh, actually, they're at the moment, there isn't a, a method for destroying them at all. So beware that if you are storing a lot of state in your actor, your cluster will grow. Or you need to implement some application level uh, functionality to, to clean up the state, but you cannot uh, delete an actor yet. 
So if you create an actor, you've got, uh, you've got two choices again. Uh, you can create a stateless actor, which does not have any local state. Uh, with local state, I mean local state managed, stored in Surface Fabric. Uh, you can have a stateless actor, which actually has some state, but it's stored in an external database. Because nothing prevents me from calling a database or a message queue or whatever. Uh, stateful actors are actors with state stored in Surface Framework, actually in a distributed key value store which is part of uh, Surface Framework. And when an actor is activated, I will show you in a, in a bit of code later on, um, that state is loaded into memory. Uh, the actor can modify, uh, modify it or only use it, and uh, after the actor is done processing a message, the state is saved in, uh, to that key value store again. So that key value store is distributed, so it has um, by default, I think, uh, three replicas. It has a primary replica and two secondary uh, active replicas, and the search fabric will make sure that all these replicas are on different nodes, and it uses a quorum strategy to decide whether it's, uh, the state is safely stored. So I've got a really simple uh, hello world type of uh, demo for you. Um, I've got a client application which uh, is my awesome user interface. <coughs> um, I've got a meter actor which represents, let's say, an uh, electricity meter, which will uh, each second uh, simulate reading an, uh, a value from, uh, from an electricity meter. And I've got a meter group actor, which basically does nothing except keeping uh, track of all the meters out there and counting how many there are. So if we look at the kind of messages we're passing, um, from the client app I can register a new meter, which will create a new uh, actor uh, instance for me. That meter instance will activate itself in the meter group. The meter group can then um, update its state to uh, increment the count. It's possible for the client app to ask the meter for the, for the last reading, and it's possible for the client app to ask the meter group for the device count. And of course, this being all actors, I can have multiple instances of uh, meters, I can also have multiple instances of uh, meter group. Um, another difference with ACA, uh, these are all request response. Because the distinction between ask and tell and ACA isn't there in search fabric. Basically, we can only do asks, which I know you don't like very much. But there's no tell. I'll get very handy. Uh, this for later on. So. Let's dive into some code. Um, so this is my active demo. Is this readable from the distance? Yes, I like it. I will zoom in on the, on the, on the code so you can read it better. I've got a solution. Um, with two actor uh, projects. The interface for the actors are stored in separate projects, and you, uh, so clients only need to reference the interfaces uh, projects and not the implementation projects. Um, I've got an host project, <coughs> which is used for publishing, uh, which contains some XML uh, um, configuration files, which I'm not going to dive in right now. The client app is my, uh, my console application. Uh, so first of all, let's have a look at the meter group actor. So all the uh, <coughs> behavior that an actor can expose uh, is uh, contained inside an interface, which derives from an I actor marker interface. Mm. So you can see I can do two things with this actor. I can uh, register a meter, and I identify a meter by some device ID, uh, and I can request uh, the device count. And everything is uh, based on tasks and uh, async here. I realized uh, while watching your demos that I'm only using <laughs> simple types uh, here. Uh, you can return objects. Um, they need to be data contracts. So uh, everything can be uh, serialized. So this for the IMEET group actor. I've got the implementation right here. So this is a stateful actor because it needs to store that uh, device count somewhere. So I derive from stateful actor. I tell it uh, the, the type of my state object, which I've defined here, which must also be a data contract. And my state object just has one uh, single property, the list of device IDs that I'm keeping track of. Furthermore, I'm implementing that interface. 
which we see here. Uh, when a meter is registered, I just add the device ID to the list of device IDs I already have. And then, I, because I need to uh, return a task, I simply do a task from result because I haven't done anything uh, asynchronous here yet. Uh, and when I get a device count, I simply get a device count from the <coughs> state and return it to the task. Now, this is a small optimization here which, uh, which signals to Surface Fabric that I haven't updated my state. So, Surface Fabric doesn't need to bother itself by uh, storing that state again of all those replicas. Mm. Um, unfortunately, there isn't any way to make reading the state lazy loading. So, you, uh, state's always loaded, for example. So, if you've got an actor which has some uh, methods working on state and some other methods which don't really need the state, it's probably better to uh, separate that actor in a stateful actor and not stateless. Also, don't store state in terabytes of data. That's not going to work. Keep things really small. Um, there's another interesting method here. This is because the, the actor is virtual, so every time it will uh, be activated, this method will go off. Uh, this statement here checks if this is the first time. Uh, do I have any, any state yet? If not, I create a new default uh, state with just a new instance of my list. <coughs> There's also um, a on deactivate async so I can do some uh, some clean. So the meter actor is uh, pretty similar actually. I got uh, an interface. Ignore this one for now. I will get back to that one later. Uh, so a meter I can activate. I give the device ID. And um, in my business logic, I want to place the meter in a group, and I give it a group ID uh, here. Uh, and I uh, got a method to get the last reading from the meter. So if I look at that implementation, you can see the active state again. Uh, in this case, I'm saving the device ID, the group ID, whether or not this meter was activated and uh, the last reading. So just some um, instance uh, information. I also create a random to fake my meter readings. So when I'm activated for the first time, um, I create a state. Actually, this is not very good code because every time, uh, well, no, it, it, it's, uh, uh, no, it's okay. Every time I'm activated, I create a new random. Um, and then I've got my interface implementation. So when I could activate it, I check if I'm already activated. That's the case, for an exception. Otherwise, I will update my state. And here we see how you can call another actor. Because now I need to find the meter group actor for my specific group and tell it that I am activated myself. Uh, and just like in act, I uh, in ECA, you could uh, uh, sort of proxy a sort of reference to that other actor. We can do that by calling actor proxy create. So I'm telling actor proxy to create an actor of type I meet a group actor, and I need to pass it an actor ID. Now, actor IDs can be based on uh, GUIDs, longs, or strings. And in this case, the ID of the actor is simply the, the ID of the group I'm passed. So I get that reference. Uh, and that reference implements the I meet the group actor. So here I've got all the uh, methods that I've declared in that interface. Are you now creating a group for every meter? Or? I'm creating uh, a group whenever a meter is activated with a group ID mm -hmm. that hasn't been used yet. Oh, so okay. let's say I create a meter for group number one. Yeah. This will uh, create an actual new actor, mm -hmm. create a new instance because that actor doesn't exist yet. Uh, when another uh, meter um, uh, adds itself to the same group, the actor pro proxy will find the previously created meter uh, group actor and return me uh, an instance to that one. Okay. 
It's not really create. It's a, it's a creating of a proxy. Oh, okay. And a proxy may create an actor yeah. or get a reference to an uh, existing actor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so I've notified uh, the, the meet group that I'm part of it. Um, and now I need to start reading uh, my fake readings. And I do this uh, in a similar way to the scheduler in Alka. Uh, we've seen that you can send messages to yourself in search fabric. I can set reminders for myself. Um, this is some pretty flaky implementation, I think. Because uh, where's the reminder? You need to name your reminder. You can pass some state with it, uh, which will uh, which you will get when the reminder goes off. Mm -hmm. um, I would expect it to be an object or whatever, but it's a byte array for some reason, so you need to serialize your state into a byte array. Uh, then you can specify due time and uh, period. And you can um, set an attribute, and the, the attribute is uh, either none or read only, and that has the same functionality as this attribute. So when I pass none, it will. It signals that uh, that it's stateful, and it will change state when it uh, when it's set to read only. It signals that uh, state won't be set. There's actually an uh, error in the documentation here because none says blah blah blah. So actor state will be saved. I read only says blah blah blah. So actor state will be saved. So this has to be so actor state won't be saved. Um, so how do you receive uh, those reminders? You need to override, or uh, actually you need to implement the interface, you need to ex implement the iReminable interface, which declares this method, receive reminder async, and this method will be called when your reminder uh, goes off, so you need to switch or if else <laughs> your reminder name to check which reminder it is and then you've got your context which you've passed in and your uh, due time and your periods and you can uh, act on it. so it works it's not really elegant i would have expected maybe uh, uh, that you can define a type which represents your reminder and then have an interface with a generic order type or something like that it's Co compared to other uh, the rest of the SDK, it feels a little bit uh, unfair. Okay, so when that reminder goes off, and it goes off every second, I just uh, get a new uh, reading from the random uh, generator, um, and I put it in the state as my last reading. There's a bit uh, on events here, but I will show it later. So those are the actors. I've got my client app, which basically has some code to uh, figure out what I'm trying to do. And basically, it's all the same, it just uses the actor proxy to create a reference to an actor, calls that actor, and it displays the results in the console. So, let <coughs> me run this. Um, <coughs> So let's just uh, say um, get device uh, or um, get device count for the meter group with identifier one. So I haven't done anything yet, so I would expect this to return a device count zero. Actually, something happened now because uh, before I um, execute this command, there weren't any actors, and now there's one actor, a meter group actor with a device count of zero. Let's register a new meter, uh, call it 100, and let's register it to uh, group number one. Okay, so now I've got two actors, I've got my meter group, it's existed, and now I've got a meter actor with ID 100, which, if everything worked correctly, activated itself at the meter group actor. So if I request the device count, again, I get the device count one. Um, Reminders are going off in the background, are updating the last reading. So if I request the reading from meter 100, I 
and 148, do it again, 160, this just keeps increasing. Um, on activation, uh, the, um, the meter group actor will eventually uh, deactivate by the garbage collector because I'm doing nothing with it right now. The uh, meter actor won't because the reminder will keep it alive. There are actually um, two ways to schedule uh, this sort of uh, thing. You can also use timers. Let's see. Let me just kill this for a moment. Uh, go to the place where I'm setting up the reminder. Yeah. There's also a method called register timer in which you can do basically the same thing. You define a callback uh, state, a due time and a period. Uh, but this uh, won't uh, survive deactivation. And this won't prevent your actor from deactivating. Mm -hmm. So if you really need to make sure that those re reminders go off, use reminders and don't use the time. So everything is stable for my, um, my cluster is running. On my laptop here, we can go to the cluster manager, see for ourselves. So I've got two applications. One is the, the system uh, application, which runs all the search fabric services, and the other one's my own actor demo type, uh, which has two actor services, uh, one for the meter actor, one for the meter group actor. You can see that the meter group actor is currently uh, running on node 4, 2, and 3, with node 4 being the primary node, so that's where the actor actually lives and where all the calls come in. And nodes 2 and 3 are used as active secondaries for the, for the, uh, uh, for the state. So each time a state is updated, it's distributed to all these three nodes. And you can, uh, of course, you can configure this, you can uh, set the minimum and uh, maximum uh, number of uh, active secondaries that you want to use. You can see that I've got here uh, five nodes one. Um, so what's actually very cool about this is that these are the actual bits that also run in the Azure data center. So this is not an emulator, and you don't have any annoying differences between an emulator on your laptop and a, a real production environment uh, up in Azure. It's actually exactly the same code. Okay, so one other thing I would like to show you is about events. So, uh, because uh, it's stateful, uh, I can uh, check the reading and it's continuing to, uh, to go higher. So, it's been running all this time. Uh, but let's say I don't want to call the actor for the for the reading each time. I just want to get events from the actor if every time something changes. Uh, for example, you can have a scenario in which you show a website, and let's say you're selling concert tickets, and you want to have a, a total of how many tickets are available, uh, then you probably want to do something with web sockets to uh, push that uh, count to the, uh, down to the users. So you can do that very easily search fabric using events. So first of all, I need to define uh, what my events look like, and I do that using an uh, active, uh, uh, interface which derives from iActive events. And so I've defined here one event, reading available, uh, which has uh, arguments, has a device ID, uh, the current reading, and a partition ID, which we can uh, ignore for now. Um, in my uh, implementation, I, I publish the reading every time I've updated the state. And to publish it, I simply uh, ask from the front base class, I say get event, I reading events, and then I invoke that method. Now to receive it. I need to, uh, in my client app, I need to uh, create a reading event handler, which also implements that interface. And in this case, I simply uh, I'm putting it to a console, but I could also push it to a web or whatever. 
and then in my actual code I create an instance of the event handler create an act of proxy once again and I say to the proxy subscribe here's the event I want to subscribe to and here's my event handler so now if I run this and I say simply listen to 100 I get all the events simply push um, this is really um, only for these types of scenarios where you want to update a website or update an external system or something like that. It's not for communication between actors because this is not reliable. It's all best effort, uh, mostly once delivery, if you're lucky. So actors um, in Search Fabric uh, use uh, reliable uh, queues on water and that is uh, at least once delivery. So there's also a difference from Akka. Uh, in Akka the default is at most once, here it's at least once. So you need to be able, you, your actors <coughs> always need to be able to um, uh, to work with duplicate messages. Because if something goes wrong, if a node goes down, it goes up, it can reset uh, previously sent messages. Now about the partition uh, grid uh, you're seeing here. Um, we can, uh, as a uh, search fabric, can scale using partitions. So a, a partition is a, is a scale unit. So consider, um, let's say we've got one partition, then all the requests uh, come into that single partition and it can e easily overload that node. So we can use partitioning just like uh, partitioning is used in database sharding to spread the load over multiple nodes. And uh, the way um, Search Fabric determines where to host and what partition to host your actor is based on the actor ID. So it takes the actor ID, it applies a hashing algorithm, and the results uh, determines which partition the actor will live in. So let's say we've got a hashing algorithm which uh, delivers, ha delivers hash values between 0 and 99. If the hashed actor ID is 38, it will live in partition 2. Now all these partitions are highly reliable, so they all consists of three replicas each, and these are all spread out of the nodes. So in this example, uh, let's say we've got a five node cluster with ten partitions, you will see that the load balancer of the, uh, the source fabric balancer will put two <coughs> partitions on each node, and we'll also make sure if you look at the yellow, um, if the, yellow the yellow partition, that the um, different replicas all on different nodes. If we scale this cluster up to ten, then it will rebalance itself and it will put each primary uh, partition on its own node. So, I want to show you one last interesting demo and see what happens if we just kill a node. Um, however, I think it has already killed itself. Uh, <laughs> so, so the character. Still running, but it's not located anymore. That's it. Is that truly selecting letter? Yeah. yeah. Wow. The console. Stay away from the console. Okay, I'm not touching the console. Okay, so this is still working. Um, this is running in partition uh, 355. Blah, blah, blah. So. Uh, I've showed you uh, already the web interface for the, for the cluster. There's also some Visual Studio tooling. So I'm now using Cloud Explorer to uh, look at my local cluster. And here I also see my application. And let's find that partition which my agent is running. This one. We can see that it's running on node 5 with uh, node 3 and 4 as uh, secondaries. Um, well, I've already got, killed node 1. Uh, so let's kill node 5 and see what happens. So I can deactivate it. Yeah. Yes. So Fabric is disabling node 5. And it will, uh, if everything goes well, it will upgrade uh, either node 3 or node 4 to a new uh, primary uh, node. Uh, 
And let's see how long this takes. Usually only takes a couple of seconds, like 10 seconds or so. Because this flat is now disabled. Ah, this one very frequently, usually just a bit faster. So if I refresh this now, you can see node 1 has been made primary. Which is stable, but this is probably more like a bugging tool. Um, it is still running. So my client application uh, hasn't been impacted uh, at all. So let's just make sure that everything is fresh. Uh, let's kill node 1 again. Get it to yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay, so now the note is, is down. So it can't get uh, can't get any events from the actor. And in just a moment it will simply continue on the new primary node. Yeah. And it has now chosen node two as primary. Um, so I think this is pretty cool. It's um, we just pressed the home machine. We didn't lose any state. We didn't even lose a connection uh, to our actor our client application. Just uh, simply keeps running. So that's basically uh, all I wanted to show you uh, tonight. So I think it's a good time to uh, <laughs> start a wrap up. The rest of the main what trying to tell you. Are there any questions regarding search fabric? Is this is already very few. Few. Yeah. Um, so the underlying bits are actually very mature because Microsoft has been using this internally for some years. Uh, SQL Azure runs on Search Fabric, uh, Document DB, Search Bus, some parts of Skype, um, Cortana. Cortana. So in a way it's mature. Uh, in other ways, uh, maybe <coughs> if you look at SDKs, it's a little uh, bit less uh, mature. Um, if you look at the, at the actor uh, model, there are some concepts which are very nicely done in Akka, uh, like the hierarchy with uh, supervision. Um, that's not possible in, well, it's possible, but it's not uh, by default in search fabric. So if you want relations between child and parents, you will have to model uh, those yourself. Um, the good news is you can absolutely run Akka on top of search fabric. So if you if you're an Akka fan, you can uh, use, uh, basically you can replace Akka Cluster and Akka Persistence with Search Fabric implementations that gets the, the best of both worlds. Uh, for those who played with Project Orleans uh, earlier, it's the same way basically, you can run it on top of Search Fabric. It's an open source project, it's not an actual model implementation by Microsoft. It, it will continue as well as an open source project. So um, there's a lot of choice, so that's a good thing. I'm hoping to see uh, uh, to see it at general available at uh, at build, which will be at the end of March. Uh, I hope they will. Yeah. What happens if you get an exception from from the call? Um, the client will get an uh, will get will receive the exception. So if if I draw an exception in the actor, well, because everything is request response, the client will receive it. Okay. No more questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, um, we uh, we have a little bit uh, the stuff we had for tonight. So there's a little time. Uh, we can go on as long as we want, but actually we were um, uh, at around ten. I would like to wrap up. Uh, but if someone wants to stay behind and talk a little more, we're open for it. Uh, I am open for it, uh, but you guys. Um, I know security is open for it. Yeah, there's no better security now, so <coughs> oh, yeah. we have to lock up. So, uh, anyway, um, nice to have you guys here. I hope you enjoyed it. You learned something tonight, and uh, yeah. thanks, guys. Thank you.